Welcome to an hour of HealthMade Radio. HealthMade is a community for natural health seekers where we educate people about common health conditions and share extensive research on the most effective natural health treatments and promote legislation that protects our health freedoms. A core concept belief is in the innate intelligence and healing power of the body. And if properly supported spiritually, emotionally, and nutritionally, it can find its way back to health. HealthMade Radio will bring information from integrative health experts throughout the world. Check us out at healthmade.co. Health is what you make it. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld, and I will be your host. My special guest is Dr. Wayne the Mango Man Pickering, the ambassador for health from Daytona Beach, Florida, and this week his topic will be food combining. He's a naturopathic physician with an additional doctorate in theology and a master's degree in nutrition. He's an author of 25 books, over 100 CDs, several DVDs, over 300 articles, and 10 health systems. He shows you how to get older and better, and not old and bitter while living a totally disease-free lifestyle. His prognosis was death at age 30. Now at 72 years young, Dr. Wayne is an award-winning triathlete and a double nominee for the Healthy American Fitness Leader Award. He is Florida State Licensed Nutrition Counselor, and his nutrition programs are approved for continuing education credits by the Florida and Alabama State Boards of Pharmacy, and most recently by the Florida Board of Dental Hygienists. His purpose is teaching you how to be the healthiest person on the planet and not the wealthiest person in the grave, with a focus on nutrition and a basic philosophy. If you want to be tough, you have to eat good stuff. He's the founder of Daytona Beach-based Center for Nutrition and Life Management Incorporated. He's an amazing man with an awesome story. Give him a minute and he'll give you a lifetime. You can find him on his websites uh, for this interview at www.combinewhenyoudine.com and also uh, on mangomandiet.com, you can find his 27-day course on food combining with 400 recipes and several hours of nutrition audio programs. Uh, Dr. Wayne, it's such a pleasure to have you here today. Uh, thank, th- thank you, Dr. Michael. Let me tell you, buddy, when I hear your introduction of what you do, I've been in 25 countries. We're so blessed to have our work in 37 countries. But when I'm traveling in all those different countries, when I find somebody that speaks English, oh, that's great. <laughs> but, boy, when you find somebody that speaks the same language, that's a wow moment. You and I are speaking the same language. And when I heard your introduction, I go, wow, this is great. Good to be with you. Well, it, it's such an honor. And, and it's, it's just amazing what you've done to educate people and guide them towards health where they recognize that you know, getting old doesn't mean that you have to be sick, slow down, and deteriorate. It's a, it's exactly. a completely different scenario if you take care of yourself well. And, and I know in your seminars you talk a lot about the, the nine components that will keep us healthy for the long haul in life. You know, can you tell us briefly about, uh, about these things so we'll understand where nutrition fits into this whole plan? By all means. You know, when we, when we get the people well, what's the use if we don't teach them how to stay well for life? And there are nine components that's going to keep you healthy for life. And I was doing a series of seminars in Alabama, and we did 14 gigs in a 12-day period. Now, you think about that. And each one of them were in a different town. So that was a lot of work, pulling settings down, getting to the next town, doing this one. and every. But one thing they all had in common, they would all come up and they, they don't say Montgomery. They say Montgomery. <laughs> and uh, they used to come up to me after the seminar and say, Doc, do you think I can get me a new start on life? And the way they would speak and their accents and everything. And I started playing with that word, a new start. And these are the nine components that's going to keep a person healthy for life. A new start. Write that down on a page. A is attitude, nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, tenacity, air, rest, and temperance in all we do. And notice the one that heads the list is attitude. And I wrote a poem one time, and it says, if we have enough fortitude to develop an attitude, 
of sincere gratitude for our body's magnitude, we will have an aptitude to reach a higher latitude for an ultimate altitude. I love it. Get your attitude right about your health, everybody, because you're healthy automatically by design and sick only by default. Now, the next one that comes in is the nutrition. And that's where we decided to focus our whole, not our entire energy, but a great amount of our energy because we have audio programs and books. All of our books are on mangomanbooks.com. There's 25 of them up on Amazon, and each one of those components has a book in there. So nutrition, we decided to focus because either in life we focus or we die. So that's the nine components that's going to keep us healthy for life. I love it, yeah. And, and, and the thing with each one of those components, even though you focus so much on nutrition, uh, each one is crucial. Otherwise, you, you start to, to falter in health. And so now how about giving us your definition of nutrition? I'm, I'm curious. You've, you've been in this field for so long. So what is your definition? And so many people think it heals and all sort of things, you know, with, with nutrition. What, what are your thoughts? Well, good. Now, nutrition doesn't heal. It doesn't cure. It doesn't do anything. Here's all nutrition is. It's a series of four processes that the body employs to make food materials for the body to use. Nothing more, nothing less. It has to break it down. That's called digestion. Two, it has to get it into the bloodstream. That's called absorption. The body will then use it. That's called assimilation. And then it has to get rid of what it doesn't need. That's called elimination. You know that and I know that. Now, nutrition is a science and it never changes. It's how we apply it that changes. That's my best definition on nutrition. And, and I think that's crucial for people. Don't, they, they don't recognize that what we eat is how we build our bodies. And so yes. nutrition are just the building block of our bodies. And like you said, you know, if we eat good stuff, you know, then we become tough. And, yes. and that's exactly that resilience to disease and, and also uh, building up health with good building blocks, good nutrition. Yes. Uh, Dr. Wayne, you, you teach the five components to a healthy nutrition plan. Uh, how about explaining that for us? And I know our topic on food, food combining is uh, such a huge part of it. Sure. That. Well, when people get our food combining guide, I made that piece of work for me. And there was a few people. I was a lifeguard at the time. And I started doing a lot of research. And I made that piece of work so I could refer to it. And, but if you print one or you print 500 at the time, it's a little different now, it costs you about the same. So I printed up 500 of them, had them laminated, and I put one out on, in a frame on my stand. I was amazed at the people who came by. And they were all talking to me about that. Uh, what are these... What are these components to add to healthy eating? I would say, number one, we must eat foods when they're in season. And the Food Combining Guide shows you that. We must eat foods that grow in our type of environment. We must eat foods suited to the type of activity that we're involved in, occupation and all that. Number four, eat foods in a compatible combination with your body's digestive chemistry, respecting your acid-alkaline balance. And number five... Eat more raw than cooked, because if it's not if it's not fit raw, <laughs> it's worse yet cooked. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is that all the raw foods contain the enzymes needed to digest itself, and when we heat them up, we destroy all these enzymes, and then we have to supply them ourselves, which will. Uh, take a lot of energy out of our body to to produce them. So if we have them natural in our food, why not use that? Thank you very much. Uh, As I say, we're on the same page. <laughs> we're going to take a, a quick break. Uh, you're listening to uh, Health Made Radio. I'm here with uh, Dr. Wayne Mangoman Pickering, and we're talking about food combining. 
Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. Uh, with me here, I have Dr. Wayne Mangoman Pickering, and, and I would say that he's really proof in regards to what he teach. And uh, he's a 72-year-old, or I should say 72-year young man. You should, you should see... Uh, you see some of the pictures of this young man. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, I wouldn't want to end up in a, um, a push-up competition with you. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you might beat me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you gave us a definition on nutrition, and I'm, I'm curious, what, what, what is your short definition of food combining since that has become such a, an important aspect in how we bring food together? Sure. Food combining is a sensible, scientific way to eat your food so that everything you eat stands the best chance of digesting and doesn't stay in the stomach any longer than it should. Here's the purpose of food combining. It's to uncomplicate the process of digestion, thereby eliminating a lot of these digestive issues that people have. The human body has 10 systems that work together harmoniously for normal functioning. The muscular system, uh, glandular, nervous system, uh, your lymphatic system, your elimination system, or your respiratory, digestive, circulatory, gland and reproductive system and glandular system. And the one we have the most say-so about, because each one of them are a separate entity in and of themselves, but yet each of them depend on each other, and the system that we have the most control over is the digestive system. Through the way we feed ourselves, then in a turn affects all the other ones. So the digestive system is the site of, let's say, ongoing chemical activity, and different chemicals are needed for di the digestion of different types of food. For example... Starchy, re starchy foods require an alkaline digestive medium, which is supplied initially in the mouth by the digestive enzyme Tylen, P-T-Y-A-L-I-N, and protein foods, and that's a very alkaline digestive medium, okay? And protein foods require a very acidic medium for digestion, pepsin, hydrochloric acid. By the way, if you're eating meat, if you ever put your fist in your stomach, if you could, but if you put your fist in your stomach for an hour, chances are when you pull that hand out, you probably wouldn't have a hand left. That's how strong the acid and everything is in the body. Well, if that's true, why doesn't it eat a hole in the stomach? Because of the mucous membrane, the mucoso uh, lining throughout the whole stomach, and the mucous membranes help to buffer that strong as, as, uh, acid. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So anybody with any knowledge of chemistry knows that acids and alkalines neutralize each other. And there's people out there that that don't believe this, and that, that's okay. I mean, it it it, um, it just excuse the phraseology blows my mind that people actually think there's a lot of a lot of uh, people out there trying to prove the Earth is flat. Come on. Yeah, yeah, there's still a group that's always that's been fascinating to me. <laughs> and you know, there's people out there that believe the Holocaust never happened. Come on, wake up! And uh, here I am, living real close to where the rockets go off. And people, I had a certain party call me and uh, send me all this crazy material, and I was, I told them stop emailing me that stuff. And so I just had them. Uh, I, um, um, what do you call it, you block their emails from then on. And they were trying to prove to me that NASA doesn't exist. I go, what? <laughs> They're right next door. <laughs> I'm telling you, I watch the rockets go off at the end of my driveway when I'm eating my evening meal. So when uh, anybody with any knowledge of chemistry knows that acids and alkalines neutralize, uh, neutralize each other. So when they're forced to go to work at the same time, digestion is virtually arrested. Now, if something is insane, we know it's not sane, all right? If something's inharmonious, we know it's not harmonious. If something is indigesting, that doesn't mean it's halfway digesting. It's not digesting. So now the body is set up for a whole challenge. Food will rot whenever it is allowed to remain for a, a longer period of time at a temperature of 85 degrees or more, and the temperature of the stomach is 104 to 106 so the science of the body is the science of cause and effect. 
We must deal with the cause. And isn't it ironic that people of the best-fed nation in the world have so much trouble digesting their food? And the problem is compounded when we not only mix it improperly, but many of us eat with no discrimination. To be blunt, we just eat junk. And it boggles me to try to fathom why intelligent human beings will try to exist, or subsist, I should say, by eating junk, as junk affects behavior, your thought process, and we are the losers. And somewhere I read one time, buddy, that the best way to lengthen your life is to stop shortening it. So if people will refrain from overeating and combine their foods correctly, as indicated in our food combining guide, you'll never have to experience that bloated feeling anymore. I was so sick for years constipation is going to be eliminated, uh, except for which comes from eating food too fast and not chewing it well enough, and drinking with meals, or mismanaged stress at your, at your meal. I'm amazed at how many people take stress to their dinner table. The effect of stress will be less when you eat your foods properly and combine them correctly. So I've learned this lesson one time. Old age doesn't cause sickness. We don't die, we kill ourselves. So never let age be your cage. And there's one thing that I'll leave you with on this thought. One of life's greatest laws is replenishment. And if we don't eat, we die. Just as surely as we don't combine our foods properly and eat the kind of foods which will nourish our bodies constructively, we don't only die prematurely, but we have to suffer along the way. Why why do that? Life is too short. Yeah, it is fascinating that we, like you said, we, we're the richest nation and we eat. We, we, there's no discrimination what we put into our mouth, and that is because we can. We have, we have the option to do that. Other countries don't have that option. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and in addition, so, so then we suffer. And then we think that, well, we're suffering, I'm bloated, painful, so... Because we are the richest nation in the world, we also have medication to manage those symptoms. So then we throw all these medications to try to stop the digestive process so we don't feel heartburn or acid reflux. But in essence, all we've done is that we've halted the production of what we need in order to be able to to process the food so that we can get the nutrients to where they're needed in our tissue uh, to build a strong, healthy body. Yes. Well, here's a closing line on that. It evokes change. And nobody likes change except a wet baby. <laughs> that is so true. That's true. Uh-huh. I, I like to, it, you talked about two things while you're eating. Don't bring stress to your table. And also you mentioned uh, don't drink water you know, while, you're, while you're eating. And while you're eating. Uh, can you just touch on those two subjects? What, yes. what kind of a negative impact does stress have by the dinner table? And why shouldn't we drink water while we're eating? When I was a kid, my dad had three sisters, and each one of them lived on a farm. And I can remember going up to, well, we used to, every Sunday we would go to Aunt Jean's one Sunday, Aunt Marjorie for another Sunday, and Aunt Ruth for another Sunday. And then we'd go out to eat at a a home restaurant where we used to have one meal once a month, and it was great. But I can remember going to Aunt Jean's, and she had a great big tree out there, and she had a swing. I was about eight, nine years old. And she used to put this hot apple pie out on the windowsill. And we used to get under that hot apple pie and we'd smell it. Uh, Do you know that just right now, Dr. Michael, my mouth is watering? (laughs) Just thinking about that hot apple pie. (laughs) Just thinking about it. So our thoughts initiate the digestive process. And when we take negative thoughts to the table, those negative thoughts evoke interrupting digestion interruption of digesting. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, and when you drink with meals, you dilute the digestive system. I say never eat when you drink and never drink when you eat. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and and that's the thing is how dealing with both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic when we're dealing with stress, we're in a sympathetic mode and digestion mm-hmm. only happens in a parasympathetic mode where you rest and digest. So that is it's 
Yeah, it's crucial to make sure that you are in, in a peaceful state, no arguments, uh, and you focus and enjoy your food while you're eating. Yes. Yes. Well, we're going to take a, a quick break. You're here listening to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with Dr. Wayne Mangoman Pickering talking about uh, food combining. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with Dr. Wayne Mangoman Pickering, and he is the master of nutrition. He's lived it, he's done it, he's taught it, uh, and he's survived by it. Uh, you. You talked a little bit about food combining, gave us a definition. Uh, obviously, there, there's a huge amount of benefits in regards to proper food combining. Uh, what are some of the definite benefits of uh, eating these foods in compatible, uh, compatible compassions? Uh, with your uh, own? Combinations? Yeah, uh, combinations. How, what, what are some of the benefits? Good. Well, let me tell you. From my own personal self, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Being in this business, October the 2nd, this year of 19, uh, pardon me, 2019, I will have been in business for 42 years. And if you saw the amount of boxes of letters that we had of just testimonies back when we started, at, before the advent of technology, and if you saw the amount of emails we get from people and videos and audios that people send us, testimonials of what's happened to them, I had no idea that that would ever happen. I did this for me. And then when we went back to school and learned the art and the science of digestion, and then I wanted to find out what Scripture had to say, and I was absolutely shocked that it was totally compatible with what we were teaching. And so I had my master's in nutrition, and the reason I'm bringing that to the table is, is we've had so many people write us, call us, interview us, and that they have conquered acid reflux once and for all in their life. They have totally eliminated indigestion when they've been suffering with that for years. They've wiped out heartburn. I know I did. They did. I don't promote that. But I'm just going to let you know what people tell us that they happened to them, because if you start promoting those kind of things, then you become, that's a red flag in the industry. But it's amazing. I could name you dozens and dozens of different uh, benefits that people have uh, you know, received from being more sensible about what they're putting in their bodies. So... Those are just three of the benefits right there, but there's many, many of them. When you go to our website, you can read the material and see and see the person's name and where they come from and what has happened. Diabetes, heartburn, heart disease, uh, headaches, severe gas. Oh, my gosh. I mean, just constipation, all of that stuff. So those are just a few of the benefits. And, and like you mentioned earlier in the show, is that the, the digestive is the pathway to the rest of the body. And yes. if we then impact the digestion, we lay a foundation where we can then restore normal function uh, in all the other systems. So uh, just by combining the foods properly, not letting it either rot in the stomach or ferment, you know, which it does if you're not able to digest it properly. And if it just rots and ferments, it's not going downwards. It is sitting there then pushing upwards with all the heartburn and acid reflux as, as a result. So uh, it is. this is such a crucial component in regards to uh, healthy living. Correct. Uh, so... I see. I'm looking at your food combining guide. You know, there, you've mentioned there are seven proper food combining rules, but you also mentioned that there are three commandments of eating. What 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 are they? The food com uh, three commandments of food combining. Yeah, uh, three commandment of eating, and then also you mentioned seven proper food combining rules. Right. Well, the three commandments to uh, the eating the, the, the food combining that you can't deviate from. There's no. There is no um, uh, exemptions. The first one is don't mix your proteins and starches at the same meal. That's meat and potatoes, spaghetti and meatballs, hamburger on the bun, hot dog on the bun, chicken and rice, all of that. Now, mixing proteins and starches actually is one of the worst of the 
food combining habits that I know about. And that's standard American diet. Everybody does that. But just because they're staples of a population, that doesn't give it any virtues. So mixing proteins and starches is a horrible uh, disease-producing habit, and there's no way this combination will digest properly. Now, you're probably thinking, what about the meat and the potatoes, the hamburger, hot dog, and all that stuff? Let's take, for example, the hamburger. The meat is the protein. The bread is the starch. It takes a series of acid digestive juices to digest the protein. That's your pepsin, your hydrochloric acid, and that kind of thing. And a series of alkaline digestive juices to digest your starches, tylen, and maltase, and all that. The starch digestive juices, there's only one food that chemic. Now, you've got two kinds of digestion, mechanical and chemical, okay? Everything digests the same mechanically through the system, through the digestive system. But chemically, there's a difference. And in the mouth, the only food that digests chemically in the mouth is starch, and I'll tell you why. Because it, is a, it needs three portions of the breakdown uh, in your, the, the digestive portion of your digestive system, the breakdown, uh, that it needs to digest. There's only one food that chemically digests in the stomach, and that's protein, and, it's, and it needs that, and it stays in there for quite a while doing that with all the pepsin, hydrochloric acid, and all that. The reason I say that is, if that, since there's four places that uh, the food breaks down, four areas, your mouth, your stomach, the duodenum, the jejunum, the, the uh, stomach is the only food, I mean, protein is the only food that, uh, uh, pardon me, chemically digests. And the re so starch is a triple sugar, and it needs three areas to break down. So it starts in the mouth, and it will continue through the stomach, if there's no protein there, in a favorable environment, then moves into past that little, uh, what do you call that valve, uh, the, uh, the uh, pyloric right. valve, yeah. that leaves the stomach into the duodenum, and then it continues its digestion favorably. But if they're mixed together, now we've got a challenge. And there's people in the natural health movement, if you will, who poo-poo, just totally deny food combining, which is okay, and their very foundation of their message that the, the doctors who formulated that kind of, um, what could you say, association, were the ones that put the food combining together. And I think it's just because they're not strong enough to go ahead and do it themselves. So they found out some reason why it might not work. It's unfortunate, but there's those people out there that do them, and there's people who will talk about you constantly. There's two reasons. Let me throw this little added thought in here. That's, that's the first combination right there. No proteins and starches at the same meal. So the, there's only two reasons why people talk about you. They like you or they don't like you. If they like you, all well and good. But if they don't like you, there's only two reasons. They don't know you or, or they're jealous as the dickens of you. <laughs> so don't worry what people say. Learn the science of the way you work because we all digest food exactly the same way. The rate of our efficiency of the breakdown may vary and our needs may vary, but the way we do it is identical. Here's a second food combining rule that you can't deviate from. Don't eat fruits and vegetables at the same meal. I'm amazed at how many people put fruit in their vegetable salad. They don't they don't combine at all together. And the digestion of fruit is delayed and the fermentation starts. Uh, lettuce and celery are the exceptions and may be combined with any other fruit except melons and your sweet fruits. Tomatoes are a fruit and are an exception to that rule as well. And you can have tomatoes with the following vegetables, lettuce, celery, okra, cucumbers, eggplant, bell peppers, and summer squash. Those are your fruit vegetables. In our food combining guide, and, and if you want to take a look at that, it's combinewhenyoudine.com. Combinewhenyoudine.com. It's all laid out for you. No more guesswork. Just peg and hole, step two. So it's done for you. Now, here's the third Great, great uh, uh, combination of food. 
eat melons alone or leave them alone or your stomach will moan. <laughs> they combine with no other food. They're in their simplest form, and they require virtually no digestion chemically in the stomach at all. A little mechanical action down there, and if they're held back in the stomach while something else is being digestion, by di by digesting, rather, fermentation is going to take place. Now, you put a piece of melon, Dr. Michael, out in the sun from 80 to 90 degrees and see how fast it composes. You leave melon in your stomach at 104 to 106 degrees, it's not much wonder melons bother so many people. They either eat them with, before, or directly after a meal. There's no exception to that rule. Eat melons alone or leave them alone or your stomach will moan. And is there a, a separation between, let's say, if you would eat melon, you know, how long do you need to wait before you eat a salad or a piece of meat? Uh, Absolutely great question. Fruit, uh, you always, in our perfect diet program, uh, that, uh, that's defeating bad eating, but the downloadable site is Mango Man Diet. that has all the recipes. But what we do is we encourage people to eat fruit in the morning, which I have the best fruit, and you've got to eat them when they're in season. I make a, a, a special menu. You'll love this. Every morning I drink this. Every morning in the summer, I don't miss a morning because it's that good. I take a whole watermelon, a whole cantaloupe, a whole honeydew, and a whole Crenshaw melon. I cut them up in quarters. I blend them, and it makes eight to nine quarts. Well, it makes ten quarts, basically, depending on the size of the melon. And I always drink one of those when I'm making it, and I put the other nine, in, I have two refrigerators, in the coldest part of the refrigerator. And that way they'll last a week. So I just reach in there, because it takes me about an hour to do that. So I just reach in there in the morning, I have a sip on that. I do my routine. I go for a walk around the block. I hear the birds going, and, and like two birds on the left, on the street to the left of me will go chirp, 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 chirp. And then Two more birds or three more birds on the right, uh, a couple streets over, will go, chirp, chirp, chirp. Surely you can do better than that. So then all of a sudden the whole symphony just starts. I walk into the sunrise. I do my 72 push-ups on that street. I mean, there's a little driveway down there that has a little incline or decline in it, and I get perfect push-ups there. So I do a set of 72 push-ups. I walk to the beach, breathe, watch that sunrise. I walk down to the other end of my street, down to the river, because I live on an island here, and it's a half a mile from the ocean to the river. And when you get to the river, it's a whole nother scene. I do a little stretching. I praise God that I made it through another day, and I'm, I've got this wonderful day ahead of me to make a con continue to make a positive difference. And enjoy life, everybody, because it's too short. Dying is too long. And I think that if we can just get this down, if you combine when you dine you'll get the correct effect. I love it. And so, uh, I, let me just reiterate. So oh, was, pardon was, me, uh, about the melons. Uh, yes. I deviate, I beg your pardon. Uh, no, so uh, what I do <laughs> is I, I, I go... I, I was right there with your journey, and I was enjoying the birds, and I was enjoying the ocean, <laughs> and I, 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 was, I was ready to just uh, drink drink that watermelon juice right there. <laughs> yeah, I call it melon out. And, yeah, and that's on the uh, Mango Man Diet uh, downloadable site. And... Uh, the, then when I come back, I always have a, a, like a good-sized peach, a good-sized nectarine, and a plum, and a little bowl of cherries, and I cut it all up, the, uh, the uh, uh, tangerine, I mean, not tangerine, gosh, nectarine and peach and the plum. I cut those up in quarters, or have, or eights, rather, eight pieces each. And then I have the bowl of cherries. I come in the office. I go to work for a while, and then I'll get back up. And I maybe have some clients or a couple of radio shows or podcasts that I have to do, and we get into that. But then the noon meal comes around, because I'm up every morning at around 6, okay? And as I say, I live in the ocean side, so my windows stay open 365 days a year, and I go to sleep at night with the ocean waves and the crickets, wake up to the morning to the birds. It, I mean, it's great. And you don't have to have a lot of money to live simply and live good. We have to start 
re- respecting this wonderful body we have, because it's not a garbage dump with a hairy lid. This is our corporate headquarters, and we own 100% stock in a blue chip corporation. I tell my audience, quit selling your stock cheap. Put a high price tag on your stock. You're special. You deserve the best. That's, that's wonderful. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to HealthMate Radio. I'm here with Dr. Wayne Mangoman Pickering. Welcome back to HealthMate Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. We're here talking about proper food combining so that you can live healthy for the rest of your life. Uh, I'm here with Dr. Wayne Pickering. Uh, we've been talking about nutrition. I mean, we here in the United States and pretty much all over developed, all the developed countries, we're so starved for good nutrition. And when we eat anything and everything and in poor combinations with our body's digestive chemistry, a lot of turmoil starts to happen. Uh, can you tell us what you have noticed that most people go through on a daily basis contending with this dilemma? By all means. You know, when we don't eat our, our, uh, our, let's say, our combine our foods correctly, then we have gas, flatulence, heartburn, upset stomach, and voila, bring on the Rolaids, the Tum, the Gelucel, the Digel, the alka the Bromo the Gas X, the Mal- you name it, just to stop the hassle of the upset stomach. Now for the headaches that we get, we take aspirin, bufferin, Advil, Excedrin, Tylen, I mean, really. Just to name a few, and there's dozens of different brands. Then we take something because the smell is coming out of our bodies, Listerine, mints, flavored chewing gum, and the list just goes on. We have underarm deodorants by the hundreds of brands because the smell is coming out of our bodies. Then we have rinse away and a host of other those kind of products because the poisons are coming out of our scalps. We take Absorbine Junior because it's coming out of our toes. We take Tegrin for that heartbreak of psoriasis because it's coming out of our skin. Uh, check this out. We use x lax to open the door, yep. preparation H to close it back up again, and then we have to take tranquilizers and a host of other calming agents just to make us sleep. Now, we start the day with caffeine. We get through the day with nicotine. We relax in the evening with alcohol and tranquilizers, only to start the next day with something that fizzes, and then we start that whole foolish process all over again and it can be totally eliminated if we just eat our foods in a compatible combination, in a harmonious environment. And that's one of the reasons why we designed the Large Food Combining Guide. And since so many people around the world want all of our recipes and our audio programs and all that, we designed MangoMandDiet.com. But that's what we've noticed about people when they're eating all of that craziness and what they go through all the time. I'm, I'm curious, why did you pick the name Mango Man? Where, where, where did that stem from? Uh, good. When I was in the Vietnam War, I can remember we were in the Philippines for a little R&R, rest and relaxation. And everybody I saw, I, I'm originally from Canada, and uh, my folks were married so many times, they have scars just from the rice. Uh, uh, home life was poor at best, so to get in this country, I volunteered to go to Vietnam, got my citizenship, and took off and went for three terms. And when I was in the Philippines on some r and everybody was going over and picking up this strange fruit that I'd never seen before. And so I asked somebody, why is everybody so crazy about that, whatever that is? They said, oh, that's a mango. I said, a mango? I never heard of it. They said, here, let me cut you one. Let me be the first one to turn you on to it. I said, okay. I've been hooked ever since. And we have a mango named after me. It's called uh, the Pickering. And if you YouTube Pickering Mango, you'll see quite a few videos in there on that. And we have trademarked the Mango Man. And we have eight, our 800 number is 866 Mango Man. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, uh, we got Mango Man Diet, Mango Man Blog, Mango Man Di- uh, Speaks, Mango Man Health. Mango Man, Digestion. If you want to have more uh, in-depth about the digestive process, Mango Man, Digestion, you can go there, and that's going to explain it even further with, uh, 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 what do you call it, like charts and and, uh, uh, digestion uh, charts that we show people how you'd work. That's a good one. You'll like that one. But Mango Man has stuck with us for, oh, golly, 40-some years, and now we've trademarked it, and it's our brand. 
I love it. Yeah, it, a good mango. There's nothing that beats a great mango. Now that, that's and for sure. Will you try the Pickering mango? Oh boy, <laughs> I'm ready. And <laughs> so, I, I'm curious. I mean, from your background, I mean, what what got you so interested in this food combining? Because that is such a cornerstone in everything that you do. Well, after suffering from years with digestive pains and and problems and all that I had, food combining completely eliminated those. And I even indicated previously when I was in the Vietnam War and I came back, I had gotten wounded over there in my third term, and I was sick a lot, very sick. And I happened to, for about next eight, ten years, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. And prognosis I had was death when I was out in West Texas. They said uh, if I would be a lucky man if I ever lived past 30, and that was from several physicians out there in Kermit, Texas, of all things. And so when I came to Florida, I was working as a lifeguard, and one of my friends had this little food combining postcard on his thing that I indicated previously. And that's how I got started with that, really. And... All food combining does, I found out, after three tries, I give everything three strikes. I, I uh, was shocked that after two days of trying it the first time, he had a little postcard out there, and I said, Ralph, what's that? He said, that's uh, food combining. I said, I never heard of it. He said, if you've ever got any stomach issues, if you try that, that'll help. So I said, oh, come on. I said, where would I get one of those? He said, uh, I said, I got an extra one. I said, I'll buy it from him. He said, no, I'll give it to you. So he gave it to me. I took it home, put it on the refrigerator, started, uh, uh, Dr. Michael, I was absolutely shocked that within two days, I had total relief of all of the stomach issues, the colon issues, the uh, pains that I had trying to defecate and all of that. And in life, here's a great lesson, everybody. Things just don't happen. They happen justly. That was the greatest thing that happened to me, because if it, if it wasn't for that and me earning the price to go out and in, uh, understand the science of how we work, I could never be teaching what I'm doing today. So never take your problems as doom and gloom. Ask Almighty God, your Creator, or whomever you show the most respect to, what is the blessing? Because everything is divine design. I'm not a religious guy. I can't stand that craziness. I'm a very spiritually connected and not religiously confined type of guy. And so the second time, I, I said, no, this can't be true. So I went back to eating my old ways, and I got sick again. So I said, doggone it, I'm going to try that again. So I, did. I was shocked. So the third time, I was sold. I said, so that's when I started understanding the chemistry of the body. I went back to school, got my master's in nutrition, and I focused on the digestive system. Then I got my doctorate in naturopathy, and then I wanted to further my doctorate with another one in theology. So that's what got me started. But all food combining does, as I mentioned earlier, is to ensure that the food that you eat doesn't stay in the stomach any longer than it should. And you're going to hear some negative feedback about food coming. That's okay, as we talked about a little bit before. But just understand this. Just because a blind man doesn't see the sun, that doesn't mean the sun isn't shining. Beliefs will only be beliefs as long as we have people out there to believe them. But truth will always be truth, whether believe it or not. And here's the truth. If you jump out of a 10-story building... You're not going to go northeast. You're going down. That's the law. You learn the science of cause and effect, the true law of how we work. And just because we have a headache, that doesn't mean we have a Tylenol deficiency. That's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would actually put a, a create a challenge to all the listeners. I mean, when, when you hear these benefits... To, to challenge yourself, you know, take a month and, and you know, go and get the food combining guides and, and charts that uh, uh, Dr. Wayne Pickering has on his website and follow that and see how you feel. 
And if within a month you feel different, great. You've not proven that this works. And if you don't feel different, then you all you've done is that you've eaten well for a month. So, there you go. Yeah. Good call. So I, I, I really would challenge, would want to challenge all the listeners to tr- try this out. You know, try it for a month and see how you feel. Uh, yes. And can we close off with a little something here? I would love to. We're not garbage dumps with hairy lids, everybody. This is our corporate headquarters, and you are special. We need to change our philosophy and watch for the enormous benefits, immediately benefits, that you'll enjoy for the rest of your life. And the reason why they don't make those chairs so small uh, when we're out of the first grade, because we can't fit them anymore. So we're already out of the first grade. Think about this. You have a new body. Every two to three days, you have a whole new lining in your mouth. Every five days, a whole new intestinal lining. Every 15 days, all new white blood corpuscles. Every 120 days, all new red ones. Every six months, you've got a whole new bloodstream. Every 11 months, you have all new cells, 75 to 90 trillion of them. Every two years, you've got a whole new set of bones. And every seven years, you've got a whole new body. So we're in total charge of our bodies, and we are in complete control of our minds. You're a beautiful person and a special person with a non-negotiable self-worth. Never sell your stock that you own 100% stock in a blue-chip corporation. Don't sell it cheap. Put a high price tag on your stock and love who you are and let your past be a point of reference, not a place of residence. And your past may be blemished, but your future is spotless. Combine when you dine to get the correct effect. Thank you, Dr. Michael. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to to have you on the show. And uh, this is such fundamental knowledge that, uh, yes, we can take this supplement for such and such health issue or uh, we can do this nutritional IV. We can we can do all these things, but if you don't have the the foundation, uh, which proper nutrition it creates that foundation, we have nothing to build on, and all of these other things becomes niceties, but they're going to fall through the cracks. So, thank you so much for being on our show today, Dr. Wayne uh, Mangoman Pickering. It's a, been a delightful pleasure, Dr. Michael. Keep on making a difference, buddy. I applaud you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. That, that's it for today. You're listening to Health Made Radio. Remember to check us out on healthmade.co. Health is what you make it.